what is going to come out. Wait to see, actually. Let's get this peeled on. Let's get this beast. Come here. Boom. Voila. Take a look. Wait. Wait, don't escape. Let's close it. Shh. Come here, come here. Shh. Nice. Crunchy. That's what I'm talking about. The beautiful Panozzo Napolitano. Today, I'm going to teach you everything A to Z, how to make this beast. I mean, take a look. And hey, you tell me now if this one doesn't deserve. <sighs> Watch the video until the end, guys. And make sure to share. I'm gonna go ahead and meet this panozzo. And everything starts from making the Polish. Here we go. So this is what we're gonna need. We need 500 milliliters of water. Melt five grams of fresh yeast. And now five grams of honey. Melted. And now with one end, we dump the flour. One end, we turn 500 grams of flour. And once everything is uh, all uh, integrated, just like that, the polish, it's ready. Now cover it, and now we leave it at room temperature for one hour, and then 16 to 24 hours in the fridge. But guys, I have the polish already made from uh, yesterday. Let's get the polish from the fridge, and this is how the polish is after 16 hours. You can tell that the polish is uh, lovely, ready by a lot of air inside. So now let's go ahead and uh, let's make the dough but for the dough guys you need a dough mixer to make the perfection you can make it by hands but it's uh, always best to use uh, a mixer this is one of the best mixer in the market once you want to make the real panuozzo you're gonna make high hydration to be able to make a high hydration pizza dough you have to use uh, a mixer otherwise by hands it's gonna be hard because this uh, it needs to be like a mix really fast to be able to have the nice gluten to be able to have the, the texture, the crunchy and the soft in the same time. Okay, let's go ahead and let's not waste the time. So first of all, let's go ahead and let's put the polish inside the machine. What I like to do here is uh, to put the water, 500 milliliters of water inside uh, where it was the polish. And now let's go ahead and let's grab the other five grams of uh, fresh yeast and uh, let's put it inside the water. Melt the yeast. And now the 30 grams of salt. Make sure you put it inside together. Don't worry about it, it's not gonna die. Recap everything. We got the Polish. Inside the Polish, we're gonna use 500 milliliters of water, five grams of uh, fresh yeast, or, or if you're using dry yeast, three grams, and then 30 grams of salt. Then we're gonna add 300 grams of semolina. Pay attention what I do. Let's go ahead and let's speed up the machine at uh, speed number one. Let's wait a little bit that the semolina gets integrated in the flour. And now at this point that the semolina is a little bit integrated while it's spinning, that's a good thing of using a mixer. Let's go ahead and let's add little bit, little by little, the flour. We are using 600 grams of zero zero flour. At this point we wait like a few seconds. And let's add half amount of the water. Leave a little bit of water in the, in the bowl. And now let's wait that the dough absorbs the water that we put inside. Usually it takes about uh, a few minutes, one minute, one minute and a half. Okay, at this point, uh, the flour is absorbed. Let's go ahead and let's uh, speed up a number, like a medium speed, around, I wanna say four. Let's wait that the flour on the side here absorbs and then we are ready to add the rest of the flour. Okay, guys. See, now we can tell that the dough is uh, ready to absorb more water because uh, all here on the sides, right there you can see there's no flour on the sides. But before putting the, all the water, let's go ahead and let's speed up at the max speed at this point. Let's add the water little by little on top of the dough. This machine has a sensor, so it slows down automatically when it, it feels that it gets too hard. So we gotta go gradually up and mix up everything, which is even better for the dough. This way it makes sure that the dough doesn't get burned. So like you can see now, it's, uh, it's getting all together. Every time that the dough absorbs the water, we're gonna go ahead and add more and more. So usually it takes about six minutes to make the whole process. So we know that the dough is gonna be ready when all the water will be absorbed. Okay guys, we are almost done. We have the last little water here. 
and uh, boom. Now we finish the water. Let's go ahead and let's add 50 grams of olive oil. We are gonna put it in the same way how we put the, the water. So again, little by little, let's wait that the, the dough absorbs the water. We can see how it's becoming good from the shiniest of the dough. See, the dough is coming out fantastic. It's lovely, smooth, that's the goal. So that means that the, the gluten is building really well. It's very important how we build the gluten, guys, especially for the panuozzo, because uh, that's what is gonna create the, the air packets. So save a little bit of uh, olive oil in the, in the cup, and uh, let's dump it on the, on the counter a little bit, and uh, like clean up the, the table with uh, olive oil. Here we go, we can stop the machine, and then I can tell you that the dough is lovely ready. Take a look, the building of the gluten, that's what we are talking about. That's the goal. So now that we saw that the gluten is nice, build it properly, let's go ahead and let's put all the dough in uh, on top of the counter. All of oil in your hands, and now grab the dough, Wow, wow, it's really, really strong. Cut it, put, put it down. With the mixer, you can easily build the gluten really well because we can go really high with the hydration. Make sure you grab all dough from the mixer. This mixer in particular can make uh, about 25 pizzas together. We noticed that the dough machine, it's, uh, it's clean, so there's no dough remaining. Be careful because if you're going to use a, a KitchenAid, uh, it's probably not going to become like that. You really need a mixer, guys, to may be able to make this process. Let's go ahead and now, at this point, go ahead and subscribe and make sure you share. Make sure you watch until the end to see the, the art of pizza, the, all the secrets. And now, the remaining olive oil, let's go ahead and let's put it on top, like that. Not too much. Well, you're going to use all oil. So, Let's go ahead, let's put it on top, and uh, like that, do this. Then flip it and make, you wanna make a, a, a nice big bowl. Be careful at this point, don't put too much olive oil, otherwise it's gonna be hard to, to make the bowl. Okay, here we go. When uh, you make the nice bowl, you can tell it's really strong, it's nice, it's smooth, it's, uh, it's perfect. Now let's grab a container, olive oil inside the container, the rest of olive oil. Now, tap, tap, tap on top. Make sure you have the, the olive oil on top. Let's go ahead and let's close and put a boom inside the container and uh, cover up uh, with plastic wrap or with a plate. This way we don't waste and we don't use any plastic. Make sure it's totally sealed, guys. Now, at this point, let's go ahead and let's wait uh, one hour at room temperature. And here we go, guys, uh, one hour, it's passed by, like you can see, double up the side, almost double up the side. Now it's perfect. This uh, process of uh, waiting, it integrates more air inside. Uh, so that's the goal, to make the best panuozzo napoletano. So let's go ahead and uh, let's dump the dough on top of the counter, just right there, voila. This one we don't need anymore. Let's open up the dough this way. Keep always, remember, this part on top. Okay, guys, now uh, don't worry about the F. It's not here anymore because uh, uh, I use it for my other video, my previous video. So we made a nice, perfect uh, pinza romana. Actually, if you are still here, go ahead and check out the, that video, how to make it really nice and perfect. So let's go ahead now. It's time to make the, the balls for this panuozzo because uh, that's what we want to make, the perfect panuozzo. So we need the balls about 300 grams. So let's go ahead and then let's keep the dough always this top on top. So let's make all the balls first. Exactly 300 grams. Okay, here we go. Done. So now let's go ahead and let's make the balls. Flip it over and let's do like a hair packet. It's really important to close it, close it, close it. You wanna make a, a nice ball first. There we go. Now that it's closed, Let's go ahead and let's make like a little uh, s shape of the sandwich. Just like that. Perfect. Done. That's how you make the ball. Let's make the whole balls. It's really important to take off uh, all the air from uh, the inside. That's the only way to make the, those panuozzo really well. Done. Balls are ready. Let's go ahead and let's grab a, a container. 
and the flour on the bottom. In this case, I'm using semolina. I'm going to go ahead and put uh, those beautiful panuozzo here on the side. So let's go ahead. Let's close it. That's really important. Put a little bit of flour on top. This way it doesn't stick on the top. And then, boom. So now we let it rest for one hour and to two hours. Depends. It needs to double up the side and the dough will be ready. Let's go ahead and let's warm up the oven because you need to warm up the oven. In the meantime, let's get ready some ingredients and we are ready to go ahead and make the beautiful panozzo. And here we go, guys. Now let's go ahead and let's prepare the ingredients for this panozzo. For this panozzo, we're gonna use uh, some beautiful uh, stracciatella cheese, a nice uh, spicy salami, which is uh, in America, they call it peperoni. And uh, this is uh, a nice piece of salami. To finish, actually not to finish, for the base, we're gonna use uh, a pesto of uh, walnuts. To finish, I'm going to use some fresh lovely rapini. I'm going to show you also how to prepare the rapini. So let's go ahead and let's cut some salami. Spicy, voila. Salami is perfect, ready? Wow, this is super spicy. With the stracciatella's blend, this is amazing. Walnut pesto, I prefer to buy because it's way too much work for me. And of course now, let's get the rapini done. So this is how you prepare the rapini. Scrub a pan, olive oil, a little bit, not too much. Pinch of salt, let's warm it up. And now let's grab the, uh, the rapini. The yellow lid, we're gonna throw it away and we're just gonna save uh, the green one. The rapini are ready, the oil is warming up. Now let's go ahead, of course, for limited, uh, uh, limited ingredients problem here because we're in a studio, uh, you, you should put uh, some pepper and there's a little bit of garlic to make it perfect. Let's, with this two spoon, go ahead and move it around, otherwise you're gonna burn it and then we cook it gently for a few minutes. And that's uh, it's perfect. Ingredients are done, and now let's go ahead and let's check the dough and let's make this panozzo. But make sure, if you are cooking the panozzo at the home oven, make sure you to put it at the max temperature before making the panozzo. If you are cooking the wood oven, gradually cook the pizza, the panozzo on the side of the oven. This way you don't burn it because it needs to be cooked slowly. And here we go guys, two hours is best by, and this is how the dough looks like. See, like uh, I double up the sides. So what we want here is to keep this air that is inside this dough, inside the dough. So that's uh, how we stretch the panozzo. So let's go ahead and let's put the flour on top. Make sure to keep the dough as it is, and then boom, take it off, upside down in the flour, and now, Close this, it's gonna get dry, and uh, flip it over a couple of times, and that's it. Take off the, the flour. Now, just a few times with the finger inside. Take off the flour. Let's keep a nice compact, and uh, the panozzo is ready. Voila, now let's go ahead, let's put uh, olive oil on top like that, pinch of salt, and now let's go ahead and let's cook it. Pinch it and then, hopla. So let's go ahead and let's cook this uh, at lower temperature. So don't pay attention to this, uh, the temperature because it's not equal. So we need to cook this at 250 Celsius. Boom, one shot. So now cook it until uh, it gets uh, nice and uh, brown and uh, or gold color, and then it's ready. Okay guys, five minutes pass by and uh, <clears throat> the panozzo is lovely, whoa, 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 crunchy, and <laughs> it's ready. Voila, perfect. Let's check out if, I, if it's possible to show you how crunchy it is. It's perfect. I mean, I like to make this big because uh, it needs to be a meal. So that's why we made uh, 300 grams. If you lower down this, the amount of dough, of course, is gonna come out small. So let's check out the bottom, did you see? It's, it's perfect, this is perfection. So now let's go ahead and let's open up the panozzo and let's see the inside. I always suggest to wait a little bit because uh, it's hot. Woo. Let's go ahead, let's open up and let's check out how is this. And voila, 
take a look it's uh, light it's empty and that's what we want okay now pay attention because why it's hot i'm gonna put the uh, walnut cream generous amount of rapini beautiful and now the spicy calabrese and to finish we're gonna go ahead and put our fresh madely burrata let's grab uh, our panozzo and to make it nice and crunchy again a little bit of uh, olive oil here on the other side pinch of salt and the panozzo is ready to go in the oven oh let's fix a couple of things and now guys let's go ahead let's close it and this is the panozzo lovely and crunchy let's go ahead and let's cut this beast Ooh, that's what I'm talking about. Take a look. Ooh, nice. Let me cut it in a few parts. And this is what I'm talking about. Let's listen to this crunch. It's crunching. Perfection, guys. I got too excited. Wow. Make this beast at home and uh, take me on Instagram. I'll see you next week with a new video. See you soon, guys.